The sport of the paragliding is all the rage in Europe. In America, only a few hundred people fly these exhilarating foot-launched parachutes. Let's join Outside's Tim Cahill as he explores the love-hate relationship between flight and the all-too-inevitable solid ground. The dream of flight. It's an ancient arrogance that exists and endures somewhere very near the core of human aspiration. Icarus lives where he died, in the deep knowledge of the human soul. And the latest incarnation of that mythic morality tale is called a parapont, or a paraglider, or a parasail. More simply, it's a foot-launched parachute, and it's supposed to send you soaring into the sun as if on feathered wing, or in this case, 27 feet of brightly colored nylon. I've had a few flights over the past several months and have come here to these humped volcanic cinder cones outside of Flagstaff, Arizona to refine my love-hate relationship with the sky, with the all-too-solid ground, and with my instructor, Mark Chirico. Good. I'm going to strap into one of these bags of flying laundry, see if I can catch some big air. Parapons are fairly easy to learn and difficult to master. But when a pilot has reached a certain skill level, the sensation is very near that of dream flight. Pick your locations properly and you can drift weightlessly over snow-covered peaks or fairy tale castles. Or, more to my taste, you can take on the high deserts of the American Southwest, preferably just after a late spring blizzard when there's about 10 inches of snow underfoot to break a fall. Parapons weigh from 12 to 15 pounds and are easily toted up the steepest hill in a pack on one's back. You don't have to worry about carrying them back down. If everything goes right, they carry you. That's if everything goes right. You're going to love it. This is the way they strap people into the rack or something like that. The novice flyer, even the person about to take his first flight in eight months, will find the strapping in procedure tense. Okay, that's good and tight. The pre-launch position, standing with arms spread to the side, seems excessively sacrificial. Inflation in calm conditions is easy, and sails packed away in less than five minutes burst into bloom with a sharp forward tug. Yeah, you can back up a step. I understand that Mark and Mike are working on my confidence, but really, who's nervous? This is simplicity itself. It's what you can do, Tim. Mark will fly to the bottom of the hill. Mike will talk me through the launch procedure on the radio receiver in my helmet. Then he'll turn me over to Mark, who will guide me into touchdown. Yeah, things are getting real smooth out there. The sails steer like bulldozers. Pull a brake, stall half the back edge, and the kite turns in that direction. Early intuitive operation. Simplicity itself. Oh, wonderful flight. You're going to do that in two minutes. This sail comes up pretty quickly, so it's going to be run. Your hands go up, yeah. you look, when you see your sail, you open your hands, you break to your ears. Drop the front risers. Let go of the front risers, that's right. Open your hands, that means yeah. let go of the front risers. All right. Okay? Okay. And then you just keep motoring. Don't jump into the air and don't stop running. You'll be a flying fool. <laughs> all right, you got your harness all There are many the things to remember on launch, though my particular problem is forgetting to breathe. Yeah, good deal. Let me check your radio. Will I get a mile above time? the ground? And a half mile. Yeah. A fall from 20 feet can kill. Parapons are just about perpetually set at overkill. Don't think. Don't think. Breathe. Don't forget to breathe. Hands up, hands up. Hands and up. simplicity itself. Simplicity, simplicity, simple, 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 simple. Well, winds shift. And it's possible, of course, that I was inept. Those of us who are sometimes inept appreciate the fact that a blown launch on a steep hillside does not automatically mean death. Parapons are more forgiving than parachutes or hang gliders. Run, run, hands up, hands up. Now look at yourself, keep running, keep running. Open your hands. 
Break your shoulders, break your shoulders, now run. Keep running, ease left lightly, keep running, big steps, big steps, and you're flying. Hey. All right, keep those legs down. Sometimes it's not flying, just a long step. You know when you're airborne. All right, simplicity itself. I'm Icarus, I'm Superman, I'm, I'm, am I riding the brakes a little heavy? Tim, don't contact the hill, Tim. Well, that's good thinking there, Mark. That's it. Fly to us a little bit. Fly to we'll us. Just lift the brakes and turn into the sky. 90 degrees left. 90 degrees left. Whoa, maybe turn back into the hill a little bit. Bulldozer turn. Very good, Tim. Start heading out to the road, Tim. Hands are up by your ears. Hands are up by your ears. Okay, good. Okay, fly straight to the road. There's the ground whipping by at about 25 miles an hour. The only thing that can go wrong now is a bad touchdown. Okay. That's it. Get your legs ready. Turn right. Okay. Right. Now level your hands. Level your hands. Uh, and break your knees. Break breaks to the knees. All right. Simplicity itself. Yeah! Congratulations, big guy. Ah! Huh? All right. Did we put it down for once? <laughs> we didn't do it here? <laughs> nice, All right. Guys. I mean, a man's a fool if he's not frightened when he's standing up there and he's about to get off the ground. I think that's probably our first fear. That's the first thing you notice is incredible fear followed by incredible elation. So flight is splendor made tangible. On the downside, soaring into the sun, supported only by a bag of air, so much flying laundry, seems to embody the idea, if not the very real possibility, of falling, which is our first, and I think our final, fear. We will fall, gently or screaming, into that dark night. So a parapond is a device constructed for the purpose of exploring the relationship between terror and triumph. And we all need more of that in our lives. Terror and triumph. Anyway, that's what I tell people who ask me why I've taken up the sport. Yeah! Otherwise, they think you're strange. <laughs> <laughs>